The Nigerian Immigration Services introduced the e-passport on May the 17th, 2007, in line with International Civil Aviation Organization standards. This put the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the pages of history as the first country in Africa to introduce the e-passport and among the first countries in the world to do so. The use of the e-passport has become a major tool in the fight against transborder criminality as it contains the biometric details of holders, thus making multiple acquisition and identity theft difficult. About 11 years after it was first introduced, it is up for modification. 10-year validity will reduce burden on applicant and on the system. Instead of people coming twice in 10 years, they will come only once. Uh, the quality of the booklet will improve. We will make it more available. So definitely it will affect the price, but that's not the intention. The intention is to make it available to the people. Uh, Nigerians in diaspora are the ones who are complaining more. We have interacted with Nigerians in different parts of the world. The National Assembly took this issue seriously. Several motions were on the floor of the National Assembly to make passport 10 years like each country. It's not only the e-passport that is up for change. The visa on arrival, which is issued at the port of entry in Nigeria and available only to frequently traveled high net worth investors and intended visitors, has had a few contending issues. But the boss of the NIS gives a lowdown. Mutala Mohammed Airport has just given a statistic of 12,000 in one month. There is never a suspension. What we suspended is that we started introducing biometric visa on arrival. Now, when visitors come to our territory, we issue them visa stickers just with their name. But we have introduced biometric visa in around 14 missions abroad. So we decided to bring it to the airport. When we introduced it to the airport, there was controversy about fees charged. Uh, that is why we suspended it until we harmonized the fees. The visa on arrival is a product of reforms regime intended to bring Nigeria in tandem with global best practices. The latest report into the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 four years after is far from offering closure to the families of the 239 people on board. Details after the break. A long-awaited official report into the disappearance of flight MH370 have given no new clues about why the Malaysian plane vanished, sparking anger and disappointment among relatives of those on board. The largely technical 400-page report, released earlier this week from the official investigation team, pointed to failings by air traffic controllers and suggested the Malaysia Airlines plane was likely diverted from its flight path manually rather than due to a mechanical fault. Flight 370 indeed had diverted from the far flight plan route. That means there was an air turn back. And the air turn back could not be attributed to a normal system. It should be more than that or it could be more than that. And based on our flight simulator trials, it's established that the air turn back was made under manual control and not autopilot. And Ho Chi Minh had also made a mistake by not notifying Malaysian authorities at the right time. The report stated that the Boeing 777 jet, which vanished over four years ago as it flew from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing with 239 people on board, was airworthy and the pilots were in a fit state to fly. We also confirmed that the pilot and the first officer held valid airman license and medical certificate and they were within duty time limits and they were adequately rested. And there was no financial stress or behavioral changes to the pilot and the FO. After years of fruitless searching in the world's most enduring aviation mystery, the report offered nothing concrete to grieving relatives of passengers, most of whom are Chinese, and crew hoping for some sort of closure. At this point in time, we find that there was nothing new in the report, nothing that we didn't know before. But the report has highlighted some failings on, on the part of 
various government agencies or things that could have been done better, protocols that were not followed, guidelines that were not followed. And uh, we hope very strongly that the investigation team pushes for reform or pushes their recommendations forward for a lot of things that they have mentioned that could have been done better. We hope that these mistakes are not repeated and that measures have been put in place to avoid errors like this from happening again in the future. But for a relative of the pilot in command of the ill-fated plane, the report offers some relief. It was clear. I feel very relieved. I'm so happy. The fact that she's cleared, but still that's not uh, the end of the story. We want the plane or the wreckage to be found. According to the report, yes, there was nothing negative about his character, nothing uh, negative about the nature of his work, his professional record, his family conditions, nothing negative. The only confirmed traces of the aircraft have been three wing fragments washed up along Indian Ocean coasts. Malaysia's newly elected Prime Minister, Mahathir Mohamed, says the country would only consider resuming the search if new clues come to light. The head of Malaysia's civil aviation regulator has resigned after an official report found failings in air traffic control when flight Emmett 370 disappeared. In a long-awaited report released on Monday, the official investigation team pointed to numerous lapses by air traffic controllers in both Malaysia and Vietnam. As the world celebrates the day against trafficking in persons, airlines and airports across the world have pledged their resolve to combat the evil of trafficking. Airports Council International World and the International Air Transport Association pledged to work together to combat human trafficking which they note affects 25 million people worldwide. The IATA's Director General and CEO Alexandra Dujuniak said human trafficking creates misery for millions and helps fund criminal gangs and terrorism. Aviation is the business of freedom and we are taking action to help authorities ensure that our global network is not exploited for evil ends. Meanwhile, the International Organization for Migration and the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons held a walk in Lagos and spoke on their collaboration with the aviation industry. Just last week, Thursday, precisely, I was part of a team that sensitized the airlines, especially Dana Airline, Harik and um, Ethiopia Airline, on the menace of human trafficking, on the indicators of identification of potential victims of human trafficking. I can tell you both that we have collaboration with all these, you know, airlines and sister agencies like the police, DSS, NDLA, EFCC, and others. I can boldly tell you that we have collaboration with even foreign law bodies. The Nigerian Air Force Institute of Technology was established in 2008 to create a high-level maintenance capacity locally for the aviation, aerospace and allied disciplines of the service and its sister agencies. This is the Institute's 47th convocation ceremony and over 300 students comprising of aerospace engineers, aircraft engineers and explosive ordnance technologists are graduating. They file out to receive their certificates. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, expresses satisfaction with the students' academic performance and urges them to be ambassadors of the Institute wherever they find themselves. These graduating students have no doubt fulfilled the Institute's high standard and requirements in character and learning. Based on this development, the knowledge you have gained in the past one or two years will definitely be put to task. It is therefore my sincere expectation and hope that as you graduate from this prestigious institution, you will be good ambassadors of AFIT in the discharge of service duties while also contributing your quota to national de uh, development. 
While on his spot, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, admonishes the Nigerian Air Force and other aviation stakeholders to be innovative and research-oriented. The aviation industry demands high security, especially in the light of global challenges, where airplanes and unmanned area vehicles have become tools of subversion and crime. This can be principally achieved by deliberate domestication of aviation applications and services through active civil-military partnerships. Since its inception, the Institute has ventured into innovation of military hardware. One of such is prototype unmanned aircraft produced locally by research students and is up for a test flight outside the Convocation Hall. I am not sure we would have to uh, have recourse to going outside to recruiting experts for the aviation industry with what I've seen here today. Uh, in addition to the manpower that is being developed uh, for the military component, uh, there is a lot too that is being developed for the civil aviation sector. Stakeholders here say that for Nigeria to fully develop its aviation sector and stop over-dependence on foreign products and expertise, the school must tailor its research and innovations in line with the contemporary challenges facing the country. And that's all on the program. Thanks for watching. I'm Bukala Joe Ukitumbi.